This video is for ELEC 1510 Logic Design. This is Lecture 17, Part 1, on State Machine Circuit Design using JK flip-flops, corresponding to Textbook Section 5.8. All right, let's review the behavior of JK flip-flops. JK flip-flops have two inputs, J and K. They also have a clock and a single output, Q. When the inputs J and K are both zero, we get no change for Q. Q stays the same as it was in the previous state. When J is zero and K is one, Q is reset, meaning that it goes to the value zero. When J is one and K is zero, Q is set, meaning it becomes one. When J and K are both one, we toggle the value of Q, meaning if it's zero, it goes to one. If it's one, it goes to zero. So that's all nice, but formulating the behavior of a JK flip-flop in that way is not actually very helpful in state machine design. So we need to reformulate that in a way that's going to be helpful. We're gonna write the behavior of the JK flip-flop in this way, using the old value of Q of T, or what we would call the current state, and then the next state, q of t plus 1. If q of t and q of t plus 1 are both 0, there are two sets of j and k inputs that could correspond to that transition. Either no change, meaning j and k are both 0, or a reset condition, which sets the output to be 0. So in that case, that means that the transition from 0 to 0 can be given by j being 0 and k being either 0 or 1, which means we don't care. Now, for the next transition, when q currently is 0 and the next state of q is 1, again, there are two sets of jk inputs that can correspond to that transition. First, j and being 1 and k being 0 means that we set the output, so the next output is a 1, or we can toggle the output. So either one of these sets of input conditions will produce that transition. That means that j has to be a 1, but we don't care what the value of k is. So for the transition from 1 to 0, 1 to 0 can either be a reset condition or a toggle condition. So that means that for j, we don't care what its input is. And for k, the input has to be a 1. That is for the transition from 1 to 0. Now for the very last transition from 1 to 1, that's either a no change or a set condition. So that means that we don't care about j because it's either 0 or 1, but k has to be a 0. So this truth table right here for the j and k inputs given the transition from the old state of q to the new state of q is very, very, very important. We're going to use that to design state machines using J and K flip-flops. Let's work on a very simple example of state machine design using my extremely simple state machine from the very first lecture on this topic. We had a single state variable and a single input in this state machine. If we want to design this with J, K flip-flops, we need in the state table the inputs j sub a and k sub a for the single j k flip-flop that we'll use in the state machine. To assign values for j sub a and k sub a, we need to look at how the current state transitions to the next state and then fill in values for j sub a and k sub a. So the transition from 0 to 0 from our table in the previous slide is j being 0 and k being x. In the next 
row, the transition from 1 to 0, is j being x and k being 1. The transition from 0 to 1 from the previous table was j being 1 and k being x. And finally, the transition from 1 to 0, again, is the same as a previous row. That's j being x and k being 1. We don't really need um, k maps to figure out what the expressions for j and k should be in a simple example like this. We'll just say that j sub a is equal to x, that works fine, and k sub a is equal to 1. So now drawing our state machine, this one's very simple. We have a single flip-flop with inputs j sub a and k sub a and then a clock. The output q corresponds to the state a. The input to j sub a that we had determined was x and the input to k sub a is 1. You can either just write a 1 or in some problems you'll have to use x or x prime in order to get 1. Let's move on to a more complicated example. This one uses a state machine that's also an example from the textbook and I used this example in a video a few lectures ago. This one has two bits representing the states which means that we're going to need two flip-flops but the state machine only has a single input which I've called x. So let's go through and fill out the state table, first assigning next states to each current state plus input. When the current state is 0 and 0, and the input is 0, that corresponds to this state and this input arrow, we transition to state 0, 1. When the current state was 0 and 0, and the input was 1, corresponding to this arrow, we transition to state 0, 0. So basically we stay in the same state. When the current state is 0 and 1 and the input is 0, we transition to state 1, 1. When the current state is 0 and 1 and the input is a 1, we transition to state 1, 0. When the current state is 1, 0 and the input is 0, we transition to state 1, 1. When the current state is 1, 0 and the input is 1, we transition back to state 1, 0. When the current state is 1, 1 and the input is 0, we go to state 0, 0. When the current state is 1, 1 and the input is 1, we stay in that same state 1, 1. So now we can assign inputs to J and K for each flip-flop and we need one for each state bit, so we have j sub a, k sub a, j sub b, and k sub b, by looking at how they transition from one state to the next. So in the first row, a goes from 0 to 0, which corresponds to j and k inputs 0 and x. I'm going to just do all of the a inputs first, and then I'll move on to the b inputs. So for the second row, a goes from 0 to 0, which is still 0 and x. In the third row, a goes from 0 to 1, which is 1 and x. And I'm getting all of this from that table from the very first slide. Again, 0 and 1 is 1 and x. In the fifth row, a goes from 1 to 1, which is x and 0. Again, 1 to 1 is x and 0. Then 1 to 0 is x and 1. Then in the last row, 1 to 1 is x and 0. Now for the j and k inputs for the b flip-flop, b goes from 0 to 1 in the first row, so that's 1 and x. In the second row, b goes from 0 to 0, so that's 0 and x. In the third row, 1 to 1, 
So that's x and 0. In the fourth row, b goes from 1 to 0. So that's x and 1. And now you've probably heard enough of this, so I will just fill in the rest of the inputs for j sub b and k sub b. 1 and x, 0 and x, x and 1, and x and 0. So now we need to derive functions using k maps for all of the j and k inputs for those flip-flops. For j sub a, the truth table looks like this, and if I want to come up with an SOP function, I'll circle this bubble, and so j sub a will have the simple function b. For k sub a, the k map looks like this, which means that the simplest function that I can circle is here, which is b x prime. For j sub b, the k map looks like this, which means that the simplest function I can draw is j sub b equals x prime. And finally, for k sub b, the k map looks like this. This one has a more complicated function. I need to circle these bubbles, which means k sub b is equal to a x prime or a prime x, which can be rewritten as a exclusive or x. So now I can draw my state machine with the first JK flip-flop. This is flip-flop A, so it has inputs J sub A and K sub A, as well as a clock. The output Q corresponds to state A. And a second flip-flop with a clock and inputs J sub B and K sub B and the output here corresponds to state B. I'll connect the clocks together. For J sub A, the only input in the input function was B, so I'll connect the output B here to the input J sub A. For K sub A, the input function was B X prime, so I need an AND gate. Now I have an input x, I'll put that through an inverter for x prime. And then I also need b going into that AND gate. And there's the input k sub a. Now for input j sub b, the optimal function was x prime, so I'll take an offshoot of this x prime line and plug it in for j sub b. Now for k sub b, I need a exclusive or x, so I'll draw an exclusive or gate. And I need the state output a, so I will draw some offshoots here to connect that to the exclusive or gate. And I need x connected into that exclusive or gate as well. So now the design of that state machine is done. This one is quite a bit more complicated than the other examples that I've worked on in these videos, and they can get even more complicated from here. Sometimes using different types of flip-flops can lead to simpler solutions in terms of these complicated state machine designs.